thanks for dropping by in today's video i'm actually going to just show you how to connect nodes and it sounds really basic but there's some really important points particularly about a merge node but while i was doing that i discovered something so i'm going to show you so this video is going to be a little longer than it was intended to be but what i found out is if we go into the media pool so i'm on the edit page in the media pool i've got some bins in the media pool so i'm going to select fusion comp bin and then in the media pool if we right click and select new fusion composition i'm going to name it davinci resolve and then i'm going to click create what you tend to see is we'll drag that down into the timeline then we go into fusion then we work on it but did you know you don't have to you can just double click on this fusion composition it will jump straight into fusion but also if we, let's say we bring in a text node whoops connect that text node to the media out and put davinci resolve in there make it a little bit bigger and then go back to the edit page we've now built a whole composition from the media pool and we now can just drag it down to the timeline and it's already made so that saves a little bit of time when you want to create say your title sequence etc you can just create them all in here we could make another fusion composition give it another name and then it would stay in there but one thing i tried that doesn't work if i come into fusion comps in the power bins i can create a fusion composition in the power bin let's call this black magic design and i can create it in here i can double click on it and it opens in the fusion page and we think great let's build a comp but when I try and bring a node down to the node graph, it doesn't work. And what that means is we do need to bring a power bin created fusion composition into the timeline. Then when we go into fusion, we can make a fusion composition or title, whatever we want to make. Now this is blank. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to delete that and then I'll take that one back into my power bins. And now I've got this to bring in. So you can create a fusion composition in the media pool in a bin, but you can't create one in a power bin unless it's on the timeline. Let's dive into the main part of the video. I'm going to jump in to fusion and I'm going to bring in a background node. Now the background node is, well the media out's being displayed in the viewer, but the background node, let's put that in viewer 2. So we're looking at the background node in viewer 2 and you'll notice it's 1920 by 1080, so HD. Inside my bins, I've got an overlay bin and here I've got a media in with some footage, some arrows in here. And when I connect this, so the output of the media in, to the output of the background it creates a merge but what you'll know is the merge from the background we've got the background of the merge and then our media clip comes in on the foreground i'm going to view the media in viewer one now the reason i'm doing this is because this is 2000 by 1280 so it's a different size but in the viewer what happens if we go to the media out into the viewer the background always wins so this is really important so the resolution of the background will always be if i come into here and do control and t then what you find now is we've got the canvas so the background is now 2000 by 1280 and our node here background one is inside it but also let's just go control and t again and swap them back now this media isn't full length if i play it we've got some arrows but then they stop if you've got that and you want to overcome it all you do is go into the media in come into the inspector and global in and out just drag that all the way and it will go for the length of your timeline what we've got here but now what will happen is it will hold the last frame for the whole composition if we go into the merge then we've got some transform controls in the merge. Now what happens is the transform controls will always, let's go in here and change the color. Let's just add a little blue. 
So the transform controls in a merge will always work on the foreground. So the foreground you can transform, the background will always be static. So if I go and do control T again, now what we've got is we're changing the background one, which is in the foreground and the media in which is going into the background of the merge is static. I'm just going to reset that so it's pointing in the same direction and then just to finish off I'm going to disconnect them and a good way is if you use the right mouse button when there's knees excuse me now a good way to make sure that they go to the correct input is to actually use the right mouse button. So you click the right mouse, right? You click the right mouse button, click and drag, and when you bring it over the top of the node and let go, you will get a context menu of the inputs. So I can select that this media in goes into the foreground. I can grab the background, and if I drag that straight in, it's going to go into the background anyway. But if I drag it in, let go. The little dot next to foreground tells me the foreground input is being used. I can select the background input. Now it's showing red, which is an error because it's not in the viewer or it's not connected to the media out. So if I put it in the viewer, the error goes away because it's being allowed to output its image. If I come into the media out, we don't get an error because it can output the image. Now also on nodes, we've got a mask input. So this is the effects mask input. Um, there's actually a few nodes that have a different mask input, which is better to use. And you can check that out in a video I've done. It's a very short video and it's in the description, the link, and I'm sure depending on what you're watching, a card will pop up or something like that. What we can do with, if we highlight the merge and just take the rectangular mask, this is now masking the foreground rather than the background. If we do Control and T again, it's now masking the foreground. The background always wins and it gets priority. So that rectangle, I can mask things out with the arrows, for example. So that is how to connect nodes specifically with the merge node but pretty much every node has the same kind of actions for connection. So that's it for today. I hope you like this video. If you do, please like, subscribe, drop a comment, and I'll catch up with you next time.